Let's talk about what's dominating the headlines everywhere in the world and of course here in South Africa more um, now than we've seen in the last few weeks. Doctor, our Minister of Health, Dr. William Kize, has shown concern over the recent increase in COVID-19 cases here in the country. But we are not the only country to see a spike in infections. Countries like Spain, Canada, South Korea have all seen their numbers climb after easing lockdown measures. Stands to reason. So you had to give us an update on the status of the coronavirus disease in South Africa and to talk us through measures to keep safe. Please welcome infectious diseases specialist and a good friend of the show, Dr. Emil Reed. Doc. Thank you, Graham. Great to be back, man. I didn't want to seem as desperate as I was to see you happy and healthy, but the last time I spoke to you, you had, you had come through a pretty dark period in your own life. You are a survivor, and by the sounds of things, it hit you pretty hard. Okay. How are you now, and what has that recovery process been like? I'm doing very, very well at this point in time. It took me a while to get over the COVID myself, but... Uh, I needed to get back. I needed to get healthy and I needed to get back to the patients that, that needed me. So I'm back. You had a, a job to do. Yeah, no, no. Um, and thank you for doing that. I, I obviously got a snapshot of the efforts that you ran and part of that led to you yourself getting sick because you had to exist on the front line. But I, I could see to the extent during the worst of the pressure during that time and how stretched you guys were in every area of your field. So thank you so much for fighting as hard as you had to, to go back into that space again. Huge pleasure. Uh, you're not one to, to sugarcoat it for me. And I can remember way back when asking you what I needed to anticipate for. And this was before COVID had hit South Africa. And you said to me, buddy, right off this year. I didn't believe you then. Boy, <laughs> do I believe you now. <laughs> so I'm going to expect that same kind of realism right now. Exactly. Where are the numbers at in South Africa at the moment? Are we experiencing a second wave? Well, at this moment in time, we, we're sitting with round about 50,000 cases. And, and, and just to, to, to be true to that, um, the numbers aren't accurate. Okay. Obviously, there's different strategies of testing, and, and, and usually the government decide who gets a test, who doesn't get a test, and that influences the numbers, obviously. And I think the, the, the big issue is that, that COVID is still around, COVID is being spread around, and, and probably waiting for the correct opportunity to, to, to actually cause a second wave. Is the answer going back into lockdown? Um, should we be going into lockdown, do you feel? Well, the answer is probably no. And, and, and if, we, if we do have to go into a lockdown again, it will probably be a limited lockdown, um, similar to what the UK is currently doing, where they have a district sort of lockdown, small clusters that they, they, they actually sort of treat and they lock down that specific district from, from the other. Um, not to allow inter-district sort of uh, spread. Um, the same probably in South Africa we will have to apply, but a national lockdown, probably not on the cards. Um, the economy suffer. We have non-COVID related issues popping up. So the answer to that is probably no. But you don't make the decision. I don't <laughs> make what the decisions. Yes. That comes with the proviso. I, I hear exactly. your uh, underlying tone within that. Where are the greatest pressure points? What should we be worried about at this stage? Well, I think the, the, the big issue at this point in time is that all of us are living or trying to live our normal lives, but we also suffer from an underlying illness called pandemic fatigue <laughs> or COVID fatigue. fatigue yeah. and, and COVID fatigue is when people get tired of being locked down People get tired of wearing masks. People get tired of mitigation strategies, of sanitizing. And that's when the virus sort of hits. So, so we're getting tired, but we know the virus is not getting tired at all. So, so the big thing is to, to not relax, not to become nonchalant, and to actually continue to follow the public health mitigation strategies that is in place. And it's, it's easy, and I say that 
understanding that it's loaded, but it's easy for us to forget about just how serious it is until we've been infected. But once we're going to chat to, to a family member who has been very deeply affected by COVID-19, and that's, I remember the first time we interviewed them, that, that brought it to bear for me. But it's easy to almost live in denial when you're, you aren't affected by it. What symptoms do we need to, to look out for? Because it feels different. We've all been tested in studio and we do it regularly. And I had every psychosomatic symptom that you can imagine before my last test because I was so nervous and I was convinced that I had it, but I still had my taste and smell. Is it different for everyone? How did you present? And what should people be really wary of? When do we say, okay, I need a test? I think, you know, if you remember what we discussed previously and the symptoms and those things, at that point we didn't have a lot of, a lot of experience regarding this novel virus. And data, uh, yeah. and, and data regarding what do we, we need to see, what do we need to look out for. And, and, and obviously we have gained a lot of knowledge and a lot of understanding, myself personally as a patient and also as a healthcare provider, um, to see that this virus is so dangerous because it can present in different forms. Um, whether you are completely asymptomatic, and, and, and that's why young people believe they are invincible Bulletproof. because uh, yeah. COVID will not affect them. Um, but but we, we, we see people that are immunocompromised presenting with different symptoms. People can get dizziness, they can get a lack of smell, lack of taste. They can develop diarrhea the way I sort of, for instance, did. They can develop a sore throat. And, and COVID can actually present in any form possible. Uh -huh. Hence the reason to be, to be scared of it. You, if you have diarrhea, you might think, well, it can't be COVID. COVID must come with shortness of breath and all these things. But it's not. It's not that. If you have come into contact with someone who has been tested positive, do you immediately go and get tested? Do you wait until you are showing signs or symptoms? How do you feel about the contact tracing element? Well, con contact tracing, identification, detection, and, and also tracking of, of ill people is, is very important in, in, in keeping COVID numbers down. So, so should you have come into contact with somebody that's been infected, the important thing is not to go and test immediately. The okay. important thing is for you to self-isolate and, uh, and wait around about five days before going for a test. And I mean, the, the test we have available, um, and it should be freely available, um, but as I said earlier, there's different strategies of testing, which actually keep certain people away from being tested. Um, and, and at some stage, um, we only tested people who has fallen so ill and required hospitalization, which is, which is obviously not correct. So, so within the perfect world, if you have been in contact five days later, you go for your nasopharyngeal swab, and you continue to, to isolate until then. Until you get that yeah. result. So if you're negative, you know, you, you carry on. Um, well, I'm picking up so many different elements of what you're talking about here, and I want to get into the broader conversation around just immune protection and being compromised, because I, I, I can tell you right now, the stress of this, this year alone has probably hit me for, for six, so I'm going to leave you to think about that, and we're going to make a little immune-boosting smoothie in the kitchen to continue that discussion, but um, you guys definitely want to stay tuned. Um, Dr. Emil Reed will be preparing that immune-boosting recipe, and we're going to chat to someone very special to the show who we've connected with before who has an amazing perspective on the coronavirus, something that you definitely don't want to miss.